Hello. <coughs> so it's been several weeks since the last time I uploaded something. What happened was I got married and then I went to Japan and I have finished books since then, but I've been so busy and so tired, so I haven't really gotten around to filming. So we are making, we are filming the Ender's Game video today. The Ender Quintet. I have filmed this video at least eight times, I think, over the course of reading those five books. Um, and I didn't like them. Uh, and that's the problem, because I get into this rant mode and the videos end up being like an hour long or they are non-coherent or there's just lots and lots of problems with them. So I tend to end up deleting them. Um, so we're going to try it again today. Uh, it's been some weeks since I finished the last book and I read them out of sort of out of order. I read them in the order that they were published, not in the order that they are now intended to be read. Uh, so I read first I read Ender's Game and then I read Speaker for the Dead and then I read um, the two last ones that I don't remember what what they are called right now and then I read Ender in Exile last. Um, and Ender's Game, which is the one that they made a movie of it, sorry about the shaking, uh, a couple of years ago. And that's why I started reading these books to begin with, because I thought the movie was sort of me. But I was told that the, um, I was told that the books were so much better. So I figured, yeah, OK, let's read the books. Let's give that a try. And um, I bought them on Kindle in like this uh, package uh, with all of the five books in one package. And I started reading them, and at the time I was on a YA bender. I was reading Hunger Games, I was reading the Maze Runner trilogy, I was reading a lot of, um, lots of young adult books. And I read Ender's Game, and it is a perfectly serviceable, serviceable young adult book. It's a sort of like early era young adult, it's, it's the same thing. Um, and it was fine, and then I read Speaker for the Dead, and I started getting a bit like, hmm... And then the next three, two books I actually had to struggle through. And then the last book I was like, if I, no, no. Uh, and I've been complaining about these books for a long time because I've been really struggling through them. And a lot of people have been telling me that I should just stop reading them. But I'm like, I, I like to finish books, you know. And the problem with the books, if I'm going to like distill it down to one thing, is the fact that Orson Scott Card has... A message that's the actual problem with the books that if he has a message and he's gonna give you that message and you're gonna listen to him and he's gonna cram it down your throat and if you're not interested and you and if you disagree it doesn't really matter he has this message and it's pretentious and idiotic and oh my god so annoying because it's not just that the fact, the way he's doing it, it's annoying. The message itself is annoying. And it's filled with these like long, 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 long monologues of I'm 14 and I'm deep sort of. Oh. So yes, I didn't like them. As I said, Ender's Game, the first book, and it was released, I think, in the 70s or early 80s. I'm not going to go look it up right now. But the first book is was fine it was perfectly fine it was an okay book it wasn't bad but it wasn't spectacular either and i realized that a lot of people love these books but i think the problem with it is um they've been so hyped up for for me by the people who have read them and tell me they are fantastic uh and that's a problem you're gonna be disappointed. Hey, I have a kitten. Uh, but they've been so hyped up, so I expected books that were much better than what I was given. And um, also, um, I'm much further away from the release of the books, so they're not so special to me anymore. It's like, if you watch Blade Runner now, 
it's just a dystopian movie. But when you watched it, when it was new, it was the first of its kind. It's that thing. It's the thing where I've read like a thousand books like this by now because they were released after he made those books. And that's probably not true either. I sincerely doubt that he was the first doing this shtick with whatever. Uh, but right now we are so removed from the time in which they were written so a lot of it is probably going to be lost on me uh, or not be as special or not be whatever and I am a lot older when you read YA books they are originally written for young adults for people in their mid to late teens and early 20s and I'm 28 I'm I'm old enough to no longer be so drawn in by the YA things. Uh, look at it like this. Uh, if you read Twilight, let's use Twilight, or Hunger Games, let's use Hunger Games. Much better books. I have read all of the Twilight books, by the way. However, if you read um, Hunger Games now, it's and you are, say, 15, you are reading this amazing story about Katniss who is overcoming and she is a st strong independent woman and all of that things all of those things and it's a great book if you read it when you are 28 or 30 or 42 or whatever you're gonna pick out all of the flaws you're gonna see uh, that the love triangle is not as strong as you would feel it was when you were 15. You're going to see all of the stupid cliches. You're going you're gonna to see the flaws much better because you are have more experience and you're going to be in a different mindset. And I am sure that some of my favorite books, if I had read them today, I would probably hate. Um, not like in if I reread them. I have books that I reread often, but books that I think... But maybe if I had read them for the first time when I was in my late 20s, I would probably not have, have enjoyed as much. One of my all-time favorite books are, is um, Witsy Bat by Francesca Lea Block. It's an amazing book. It's so nice and it's like, it's fantastic. But I think that if I had read it today, it wouldn't have hit me the same. I wouldn't have had, it wouldn't have had the same impact on me and who I was and who I was going to become because I've already, I'm going to, I'm going to keep changing. I'm not going to say, sit here and say, oh, I'm in my late 20s, I'm a done product. I'll never change and evolve. But I think that when you are in that age, I think I was maybe 12 the first time I read it, you are still changing in your personality in a very different way than what I am now. And I think that that was one of the problems with the Ender Quintet. I was too old and I have read those types of books where with like the butchered philosophy and the cramming of your uh, ideals down someone's throat. I, I've read that before and I've passed the point in my life where that was going to make a huge impact on me. Now, this is not the first book of Orson Scott Card I read. I tried to read... I think it's called Red Prophet once. Just the first book in the series. I think it was called Red Prophet. Yeah, I, I, it might, I might be wrong. It might not be called that at all. But it's, it was the same deal. It was the same problem. I gave up about two chapters in when one of the characters says something along the lines of No, I was wrong. Uh, and the other character says No, but you can't lie because this character can't lie. And he says No, but I didn't lie. I believed it when I said it. Uh, but I read Worms, W-Y-R-M-S, uh, when I was 16, I think, and that was amazing. I highly doubt I would like it now, but it was amazing back then. Um, so it's not that I think he is necessarily an awful writer, except that I do. Uh, and also, um, one of the things... I feel like if you're going to talk about Orson Scott Card, you have to talk about the whole controversy with Orson Scott Card. And I'm just going to touch on that very, very briefly. Um, he had, a couple of years ago, he made an internet article thing where he talked about um, hom homophiles. Uh, hom homophilia? I don't know. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. 
um, in um, English, but he talked about uh, non-heterosexuality, homosexuality. He talked about homosexuality and bisexuality and stuff. I have not read this, but I have been told about it. And that sparked huge outrage. And one of the reasons it sparked huge outrage, in my understanding, is that certain people thought that he preached, especially in the under books, that he preached uh, acceptance of people who are different. And I disagree with that. I, I find the stance that he took reprehensible. Let's just say that straight out. Um, I I think that we should be accepting accepting of all people, all sexualities, everything, all like that. Very, uh, and the fact that he was judging people based on who they happen to love was reprehensible and awful to me. But he isn't preaching acceptance of other people or people who are different than you in this uh, Andrew Quintet. What he is doing is trying to figure out when are you a person and what is a soul, basically. That's at least my understanding of it. Uh, I couldn't see this thing that people were talking about where he was trying to be accepting of whatever. I couldn't see that. I was, however, seeing like a philosophy a philosophical discussion ab about when are you a person? When is sentience enough that you are a person? Um, it didn't help. I didn't like it. Um, at the moment, uh, I'm, I would have to look it up and I'm not going to do it right now, but I think I'm about 30 books behind on my Goodreads challenge, so I have to start motoring. School is starting next week. I'm gonna be busy um i have a couple more videos coming up hopefully fairly soon i have finished a couple more books i finished the just city by joe walton uh and uh, the fourth skin worker book by um my head stopped faith hunter at the moment i am listening to the fifth skin worker book on uh audiobook i am reading on paper i am reading the hidden city by an author and The Library at Mount Cairn by another author. I'm gonna put that in the description box. And I am reading, I am rereading Joust by Mercedes Lackey on Kindle because I needed something nice to read on Kindle after that. Try it. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go do something else. I am, I am, uh, I have bought myself a new desk, so I'm going to go assemble that. Yay, Ikea. Uh, and I will hopefully make another video, video this week. So, uh, bye!